this will be take two. I'm going to try to do something useful. One thing I've learned is if you have a whole bunch of things you're doing in a video, do the things you haven't done that you weren't able to get to in the previous video, and you might do a better job. <coughs> Bismuth bodied tungsten plugged slugs. Grams per cubic centimeter ratings. 7.86 for steel and iron. Bismuth is 9.6. Lead is 11. Tungsten, nickel, iron, Remington heavy shot is 12. Federal heavyweight is 15 because it's virtually nothing but tungsten. And then pure tungsten is 16. Not quite double. Actually, yeah, it is double the, the, the density of steel shot. Mixing the two, or just using tungsten with bismuth, which is pretty not really half the volume, lets you make a lead substitute. And if you look for deals, it's not as cheap, but nearly as cheap as normal lead shot. Now, why do people use this? Well, it, the, this is going to have an effect. If you're in a state that says anything with a tungsten core is somehow armor penetrating, instead of you trying to go hunting and not ruin the environment by putting lead into it, change their laws and put an exception in for bird shot and buck shot and turkey shot, chicken choke. So here we go. Bird and buckshot, metal ions releasing into the water. Metals corroding, rust, decay. Versus the effects on wildlife through actual testing using model animals. This is done with uh, literally uh, sea monkeys. <laughs> they just use that. Tungsten and bismuth had no effect or harm. No effect on the water because it didn't decay as much. And it didn't affect anything. Nickel-plated lead had little or no effect, but it would technically decay over a very long period of time and cause no harm. Yeah, nickel-plated lead pellets. The idea with them is they, if they nickel-plate them correctly, they're harder, and harder shot has a, has a much better time not getting warped or deformed being fired, better ballistics, better grouping. Copper and zinc were found to affect the environment by dissolving into it and actually killed things in the water. So copper at all. Copper wash probably a lot less damaging. And zinc definitely damaging to water. Life forms. Iron decayed a lot faster. In fact, it would essentially biodegrade almost and had no harmful effects and simply put iron into the water supply, which might have actually improved health. So your safest materials are still steel shot wrapped in bismuth or tungsten wrapped in business, bismuth. And yes, you can get tungsten, bismuth, or just tungsten powder mixed stuff, and you can use it for hunting. And then I'm going to bring up something interesting. You could do uh, on purpose. You can find buckshot that's made this way. Yeah, it really does exist. And <clears throat> you can use it as an anti-personnel round because it's denser. You can fire a smaller number of pellets or a larger number of pellets or whatever you want to. But, yeah. The idea is it damages the gun less if it's specific mixtures, damages the environment less, and you don't have to use lead if you don't want to. Warning, a lot of these metals, if you melt them, <laughs> if you want to actually make these things, will let off vapors that are much more dangerous than just making things out of lead. And next thing is, you want to powder coat every damn thing if it's got any lead in it. <coughs> Let's continue. <coughs> Gauges, calibers, inches, whatever. Now, I looked online, I really looked, for a calculator routine that would provide me the ability to translate between caliber and gauge. You can just type in caliber because it's a, a, based on how large an inch is. 50 caliber is half an inch. Uh, 73 caliber is, in fact, 0.73 inches. It's also a 12 gauge. And it doesn't seem to make sense when you look it up. But there's a calculation for it. So here you go. Let's say you have the gauge, 12 gauge, okay? You divide the number 4.664 by 12. Then you make that to the one-third power. One, instead of cubing it, you cube root it, and that will give you the caliber in inches. It'll say 0.5 for 50 caliber and 0.22 for 22. But that's a pain in the ass to do. Well, 
uh, below me, you'll see a link, google.com search Q equals the equation. And the equation is upper caret for to the power dot three 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 to the third. And yeah, literally it will do the calculation for you. It right now is set for 12 gauge and it gives you the number out that tells you it's 73 caliber or 0.73 or 72 or whatever. Now to do the other way around, <coughs> it's you take the caliber, let's say it's 73, you cube it, you multiply itself three times and you use that number to take 4.664 and divide it by that number and that'll give you the gauge. And that would be 12 for 73 caliber approximately. Now why is this useful? Because I couldn't find any way to get one of these and it's so simplistic when you just type it in as an equation that will be tolerated by Google search engine. If you were trying to convert back and forth between gauge and caliber at any time in your life, this gives you a very close approximation and it's an approximation. I'm going to bring up an example in a minute. <sighs> gauge to caliber equals gauge to inch. Never forget that caliber and inch are related to each other directly. And also then millimeters can be translated much easier this way. But they'll never be perfect because of some real problems. To establish the gauge, you measure what is called the bore of a shotgun or any other item. You can do this with a 22 caliber pistol now, because I gave you the equation. But you don't measure it at the chamber or at the nozzle, aka the, the muzzle, or choke diameter, or at the forcing cone that comes after the chamber. It's whatever it is for the majority of the diameter of the barrel, unless it's not. Let's talk about an extreme case. So I'm gonna bring up some weird thing like a 50 gauge, right? No, no, I'm not gonna do that at all. <clears throat> I'm gonna bring up the most common gauge you've ever heard of. In fact, I talk about it on my channel all the time, but I don't label it correctly. It's a secret code. The nine gauge shotgun. That's a 12 gauge pipe gun. The diameter at the ass end of a shotgun, bull, a shotgun shell is around 80 caliber. It's actually 81 to 80, something like that. And that works out to 20.39 millimeters or exactly nine gauge, almost exactly. It's like spooky how close it is. Well, what are the numbers on the rest of the parts of the gun? I'm glad you asked. Your shotgun can be anywhere from that max bore. That's the maximum bore, AKA chamber bore, as I called it in a previous video. It's a nine gauge because you can write on the side of it, 12 gauge shell, nine gauge bore on the side of your gun because some states actually don't want you to do that, but you can. So what are the other diameters? Well, that 12 gauge shotgun can have a gauge diameter of nine gauge to 14 gauge. Yes, that literally overlaps a bunch of other shotgun shell bore diameters. 10 gauge is 0.77 inches. Uh, 0.75 inches is uh, 11 gauge, apparently. Um, I'm getting the numbers mixed up here. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I got them backwards here, or 5.7. But the numbers here are all approximated from looking them up, then running the calculation, and then throwing them in here and hoping I got them right. Common shotgun and flare gun size declared gauge is uh, 72.9 or 73 caliber. But 12.2 is a SAMI test board. It's actually overboard slightly, or underboard, excuse me. The numbers confuse me here. Then we have 71 caliber. That's a 13 gauge. And then of course we have 69 caliber, which is the smallest size that you can get a slug out of. Anything that a slug won't go out of, you had to look up the one that was, without blowing the bore up, without blowing the gun up, through a choke, 14 gauge. So you take your 12 gauge and turn it to a 14 gauge, or you make a pipe gun, and it's an 80 caliber, AKA nine gauge. Pretty, pretty, pretty crazy. Then we have all the other ones. The shotgun and bore obstruction hazard for 12 gauge, 20 gauge is a 61 and a half caliber. Shotgun and the longer Orion flare inner bore, some shotguns are 28 gauge and the really long orange flare gun cartridges I had on the channel before, those actually have an internal 55 caliber uh, tube in them. So they're actually a little 28 gauge bore. So it's like a little tiny, if you bolt it, took it out and made a metal version, that would be a 28 gauge shotgun bore. Wouldn't fit the shell. This is just the bore. Because again, the bore and the shell are different diameters. For instance, it's a 73 
caliber bore, but it uses an 80 caliber shell for its standard 12 gauge. This is the reason the standard seems like a stupid thing to look up. You have to measure everything. Which is also the reason you end up with these bore obstruction problems if you put the wrong shell in. And yeah, you could avoid all this, but then you wouldn't be able to customize the choke behavior. People talk about AR-15s being customizable and heavily modified and not really being standardized. And then you look up the hardware for shotguns and see people doing these sorts of things. And the things they're doing are just off-the-shelf modifications to change performance from literally 14 gauge to 9 gauge. Uh, by the way, there's a stalker walking around the block with a metal pipe shaking it at me. So this might get interesting. Anyway, some fun numbers. A 17 caliber pellet gun, 150 gauge, um, 22 caliber rimfire pistol long rifle is a 420 gauge. Funny. The 402, 402 gauge is a 223. And there's a bunch of them listed below. I mentioned bullets and buckshot and that sort of thing. Rule. If the gauge on your on your gun has a certain number and you put in pellets that are half that diameter or a little larger, they can jam like that and blow the gun up. So somebody came up with a standard in France for a gun that couldn't have that happen. So they looked up the largest shot size and made it one bit bigger than two of them put together. So you could have a whole layer of them at the bottom. It's basically a cannon. Flare gun gauges. You knew it was going to come to the flare guns. I tried to find a flare gun you can make yourself out of plastic, metal, wood, that you could make so you could be a cosplay item. Also so you could actually have one if you needed one without having to spend money on a company that essentially has an ATF authorized monopoly. Kind of yes, kind of no. Because you have to, this is the other part of it. Is it an obsolete cartridge type? It's not. It's used by the military and everything like that, but it has never been used or has no ability to be used commonly for anything anti-personnel. So here's how it's done. The most popular flare gun bores are 12 gauge. Avoid that. 26.5 millimeter, 25 millimeter, and then finally 37 millimeter. Now the 37 millimeters right off the bat, not good. That's a 144 caliber hand cannon looking thing or very close to it. What about the um, 37 on the notch? It's 145 caliber. It's the largest flare gun. It's un uncommon. People don't normally need it or use it, and it's still approved. What about the one inch bore, 26 and 25 millimeter? Well, that's kind of the thing. The largest common flare gun, or large flare gun, is a one incher, and it's actually 1052. Now, if any of you watch my channel, you know that's also the diameter of the interior of a Schedule 40 one-inch pipe. The interior diameter is literally a flare gun cartridge type. You know that receiver people use to slam a metal tube into to make it act like a 12-gauge? Which means you could use it with that by making a flare gun and then use a subcaliber adapter for 12-gauge. Now, why would this be acceptable if you made it pattern exactly the same? In fact, make a complete copy of it. If you do the plastic or Orion one, one incher, you're asking for trouble because you can't do it in metal. But legally speaking, if you have a metal flare gun and it's just a copy of it, it looks like a knockoff, and you go ahead and put serial numbers on it, you know, use your GPS location from Google Maps and the time and date stamp in ISO format, that's perfectly acceptable. It's a location and time and date stamp. You can even write your name on it. Nice calligraphy. That'll work. And there are subcaliber adapter from one inch down to 12 gauge and all the other things. So you can actually do this for testing bullets and that sort of thing. So that's useful. I guess. But it's a four gauge shotgun looking thing. But the cartridges are uncommon enough you could get away with saying it's an obsolete cartridge. It's not commonly used for weaponry. But making 12 gauge? But this would allow you to also close it, latch it, and use it for slam fire if you want to. It would absolutely be okay to have hanging on a wall and then have a barrel over here 26 inches long and you could actually use it if you needed to. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that. Bye.